The information shared in this episode is not intended to serve as a substitute for mental health services and is only intended to provide education and information to you, the listener. Hey, this is Bina. Thank you so much for listening to the Honeybee Podcast. This will be one of two episodes where I will be chatting about complex trauma. Out of curiosity, do you know a child who has experienced multiple traumatic events that were severe, repetitive, and prolonged in nature? If you do not know a child with this experience, is there a possibility that you were that child? Do you know a child who has lots of difficulty with maintaining their focus and attention in school, is struggling in establishing or maintaining positive attachments with others, or that their view of themselves has negatively changed after experiencing repetitive and prolonged trauma? Are you a parent with concerns about how your child's view of the world has been affected since they have experienced various traumatic situations? If you have answered yes to any of these things, please stay tuned to this two-part series where I will share information about complex trauma and ideas that will help in providing support to the person who experienced complex trauma. There are many people within our country and across the globe who have experienced more than one traumatic event, which typically occurs before the age of 18. Things like childhood neglect, sexual, physical, or emotional abuse, as well as parental abandonment or parental substance use, as well as witnessing or being a victim of domestic violence are all examples of traumatic occurrences. In situations where a child is neglected, there is a high probability that there is also physical or emotional abuse. In situations where a child is sexually abused, there is a high probability that the child is also being mentally abused as well. This sort of exposure to multiple traumatic events is the definition of complex trauma. When we experience a series of traumatic occurrences, our brain changes. Its sensitivity, the things that it reacts to, all changes. Our internal watchdog becomes heightened, and we begin to automatically watch out for danger. This is necessary, and it makes sense that the brain does this. This biochemical change helps in keeping you safe. Even after the traumatic occurrences have ended, the brain does not return to the way it used to before the trauma began. Children can feel afraid, sad, or mad a lot of the time, typically blaming themselves for what has gone wrong. It becomes hard to trust people when you never know if someone is going to let you down, disappear, or attack you all of a sudden. Understandably so, given that Complex trauma usually occurs in the context of a close personal relationship. If you feel like people don't care about you, you might start to think that you deserved all of the bad things that happened. Instead of feeling loved and special, you might not feel good about yourself. You might feel like you're really different from other people and like you do not fit in at all. It might feel like you will never be good at anything, no matter how hard you try, and you may just want to give up. It can feel really hopeless. Oftentimes, us adults think that children bounce back from awful things easier because they're kids and that they really aren't phased by the awful things that have happened to them as it relates to trauma. While it is accurate that children are resilient, it is not that easy. When children are exposed to a series of traumatic events, their world changes in a dramatic way. I want to share more about the difference between trauma and complex trauma. 
The reality is that many of us at some point in our lives will experience a single, frightening, dangerous, or tragic event. In that is a threat to our safety and a creation of a deep sense of helplessness. That is trauma. Complex trauma is different in that the frightening, dangerous, and chaotic thing keeps happening over and over again. The person constantly feels under threat, is constantly looking out for danger, and is constantly feeling helpless. I would like to thank the National Child Traumatic Stress Network for the following. I think that this is a helpful distinction between the experience of a traumatic event or two and the experience of repetitive and prolonged trauma, also known as complex trauma. We will all experience bad and unpleasant things in life. That is a fact that cannot be ignored. The bad, unpleasant things that happen in life is similar to walking outside and the sun is out, but partially covered by a cloud. Then there is the experience of a traumatic event or maybe even a couple of traumatic events. This is like walking outside and the skies are gray and there happens to be a storm cloud hovering above you. Complex trauma is like walking outside and there are storm clouds all around you all of the time. This is happening consistently and in an intense way. Complex trauma affects many people during the lifespan, regardless of their race, age, economic status, and religious practices. Now that there is an understanding of the difference between experiencing a traumatic event or two versus experiencing complex trauma, the next episode will focus on ways to help a child who has experienced repetitive and prolonged trauma. The kid's ability to recover from trauma depends greatly on the quality of support from their family, their community, and so on. So be sure to tune in to the next episode to learn more about this. Thank you for listening. Please check out my website, myhoneybeetherapy.com. That is myhoneybeetherapy.com. Pretty please, like my Facebook page. You can find me there by the name of Honey Bee Behavioral Health. You can also hit me up over email at honeybeebehavioralhealth at therapist.net. Also do me a super huge favor and subscribe to my channel so you can listen to new episodes from the Honey Bee Podcast when they drop. Until next time, peace.